all the forests are made up of multiple trees and random forest is no different welcome to unfold data science this is aman here and i am a data scientist in this video i am going to talk to you about how random forest is a favorite algorithm of most of the data scientist and what makes random forest so special let's start so in my last video i was talking about something called ensemble learning so what is ensemble learning at high level is it takes learning from multiple models and combines the learning okay and in my second last video i was talking about decision trees one of the algorithm to solve a machine learning problem so one of the machine learning technique okay here if we talk about decision trees right so very first thing to understand here is what are the advantages and disadvantages of decision trees okay so i had in detail described how decision tree works in my this video you can go and watch i am just going to describe what are the advantages and disadvantages of this particular model so the advantage of decision tree is it's easy to understand easy to train the model and easy to interpret because decision tree works on a nested if else condition so if this condition then this happens else if this condition then this happens so something like this the model training happens through a nested if else statement okay now this is easy to train easy to learn easy to interpret so that is the advantage side of decision tree but the disadvantage of decision tree is decision tree models tend to overfit so what is the meaning of overfitting the meaning of overfitting is if a decision tree model gets trained like this so this is the tree and these are the different branches of the tree so if a tree keeps growing okay if a tree keeps growing till the last node or last you know leaf then there is a tendency of decision tree of overfitting or in other words we can say high variance so what is the meaning of high variance is let's say this tree gets trained okay and you want to check the accuracy of the tree on a test data or on a unseen data so decision tree don't tend to perform very well on test data which means the training accuracy might be high but test accuracy will not be high let's try understanding with a simple example so let's say this is the test data that you want to expose to decision tree for you know prediction so let's say this is the age column and this is the salary column and you want to understand whether the employee will leave or no okay so if your age is let's say 26 and salary is let's say 32k and then the decision tree may may say leave yes okay but it is quite possible that if you make this 26 as 27 if you make this 26 as 27 then the test result might change as no and how it changes is it is quite possible that if you make that 26 as 27 then it might change the branch in which it goes so that is how the prediction happens in decision tree this particular thing is called high variance of the model when model is doing good on the trained data but not doing that great on test data so what is the advantage of random forest random forest reduces this high variance random forest minimizes the variance of the model how it does that let us see how random forest works okay so in random forest the decision trees are built using the bagging technique okay so if this is your main data this is the main data let's say this data has m rows and n columns okay this is the main data from this data using bootstrap aggregation or bagging which i had discussed in my this video multiple bags of data will be created for simplicity if i put three bags here okay so this is the bag 1 of the data this is the bag 2 of the data and this is the bag 3 of the data for all these bags there will be row sampling and column sampling as well so what i mean by that is from this m rows okay so m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns from this m rows here m small m randomly selected rows will come in this bag okay and from this n column small n randomly selected columns will come in this bag so let me make it m1 n1 okay similarly from in this bag from this data m2 number of columns and n2 features will come in this bag m3 columns from the main data and n3 number of rows will come 
now remember guys always this small m will be smaller than capital m simple right because it is the sample from the capital n similarly this small n will be smaller than capital n because it's a subset of that now what is the optimal size of this m1 and n1 so typically one third of the data one third of the data in the main data set will not come in this bag okay which means two third of the data typically randomly chosen two third of the data comes in this bag okay so if we start with 300 rows then 200 rows will come here randomly selected 200 rows will come here 200 rows will come here and this is a with replacement selection which means once this bag is created all the rows comes back here and that is the candidate for coming in this bag as well which means there can be repeated rows in this bag and this bag as well so this is how bags are created similarly columns so how what is the optimal number of columns so there is no uh, you know we can give uh, this is the optimal number of column we should take we should you know keep changing the number and then decide but under root capital n is one you know base from where we can start so if we start with nine columns then three columns randomly chosen here three columns randomly chosen here three columns randomly chosen here again with replacement so columns may repeat so this is how bags are created now what happens once the bags are created one decision tree will be fit on this bag other decision tree will be fit on this bag one decision tree will be fit on this bag now when we run a random forest multiple decision trees are being fit on these bags okay and tomorrow when a test data comes when we want to test or predict what is the output from the random forest let's say we are talking about two class classifier then this tree will say let's say our target variable can be zero or one so this tree when we test on this tree that happens internally so i'm talking about how random forest gives you prediction okay so let's say this tree says one this tree says zero and this tree says one so majority voting i repeat here majority voting comes into the picture in random forest prediction so what is the majority voting here one hence the prediction from the random forest will be one what happens if it's a regression scenario we can either take mean of all this or median of all this but in python sesquilearn generally mean or average of all the decision tree is the predicted value from the random forest okay so this is how random forest works and this is how the prediction happens in random forest but why random forest tend to perform so good in comparison to normal decision trees or why it is favorite for so many people out there so what happens here how it reduces the variance i'll give you an example and try to make you understand so let us say this is the data we are working on okay so this is a organization data let's say in organization data we have age okay age of the employee then salary of the employee and then you know commute distance let's say how much you commute to reach to your office okay so i'll say com d commute distance and then i say whether employee leaves or stay in the company okay so this is the data on which you train your model let's say a classification model again so in this case what happens when we take one decision tree only so what will happen here is all of us know that salary is a very strong variable for someone to take a decision whether he or she wants to stay in the company or leave the organization right so when we create one decision tree salary will always come out to be a strongest variable or in terms of decision tree it will be root node mostly which means strongest variable so what happens when we test on you know when we predict or test on the trend model is every time the salary the salary feature dominates the behavior of all other features so just try to understand here salary is a very strong variable and hence all these variables age or commute distance these variables also may be important but salary is so important that every time you test or try to predict on this trend tree only salary is going to contribute to the decision to a very high extent and hence salary suppresses the effect of these variables but what happens in decision tree is when you create multiple 
multiple trees right so this tree may have as i told in my picture all the trees will take m rows and n columns which are subset of the main data now this is tree 1 or bag 1 the tree 2 is built using this is built using m1 n1 this is built using m2 n2 there is a high possibility that in one of these trees salary is not part of the feature and hence the training happens on other features or other variables what will happen in that case is any learning any pattern in age column or commute distance column will also be captured and that particular tree also votes in the final decision and hence random forest captures the pattern of the data from various angles that is why random forest always tend to give you good result what are the other advantages of random forest it's easy to implement so you just call random forest in python or r you just have to take care of the hyper parameter tuning what is that you have to decide what should be the optimal number of tree what should be the optimal number of features m and n rows and columns and other parameters like what should be the maximum depth of the tree those things hyper parameter tuning we have to do and then we are supposed to get very good results okay but there are certain disadvantages of decision tree as well disadvantage number one is it is kind of a black box model so what is a black box model a black box model is a model on which we do not have lot of control on what is happening inside tomorrow if business person asked me someone from the business asked me explain me your model what is your model doing mathematically i may not be able to explain that very well i may be able to give a very high accuracy but i may not be able to explain the model mathematically that is one disadvantage of decision tree random forest another disadvantage of random forest is if your data size is huge and if your feature size is huge which means data lot of rows and lot of columns are there then it might be very expensive to train the model which means more space and more time might be needed because it creates multiple decision trees okay so this is about how random forest works internally how prediction happens what are the advantages and disadvantages of random forest in my next video i'll show you the practical implementation of random forest and how do you choose the optimal number of trees optimal number of m and n and how do you come out to the best model using python i'll show you the exact course for that so i'll show you that in the next video till then if you have any doubts on this topic let me know through comments let me know through likes and comments how did you like this video i'll see you all in the next video till then take care